today is very simple. It's going to be the four keys to success. And what's funny about this topic is this is a training um, that I did about six years ago. And it was the one that Darren actually said that he watched and it really changed his life. And here's what I want to share with each and every one of you is that you have no idea who you're inspiring. And, you know, this is a time that you want to document everything. You know, most people want to start documenting things after they become successful. I say start documenting everything now. And it's definitely going to come in handy when you guys learn to start telling, telling your story. Um, so kind of share a little about who I am for those of you guys that don't know me. Kind of like uh, what Darren said, you know, my name is Julian Down. I've been in, I've done network marketing for the last 12 years. And uh, my story is a little bit different. You know what I mean? I wasn't the typical person that you thought would become successful. Um, I didn't have the qualities that you thought, you know, someone would have. Um, and so just kind of give you guys an idea of who I was and how I got here. You know, what I do right now outside of network marketing, well, actually I don't do network marketing anymore, but what I do right now is I, I, I own a coaching company and what I teach is self-awareness and I teach social awareness, right? And not only do I support people in being their most authentic self, but supporting people in developing themselves to be their most charismatic self. And, um, and, you know, not only doing that, but also identifying your message from your mess. You know, a lot of times we guys, we go out there, we get tested. But we fail to realize that, hey, so many of us want a powerful testimony, but we don't recognize that in order for us to have a testimony, we had to go through a test. And so I support people in doing that, you know, identifying their traumas and not only identifying their traumas, but learning to recognize and seeing it, how it's actually a blessing. And then from there, learning how to attract their tribe and how to build their tribe. Because I think, honestly, having the tribe, the right tribe is so important. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you that, you know, if you can't have the right results being around the wrong people. I mean, there's just no way around, there's just no way around that. Um, and, you know, oftentimes we, we spend so much time trying to spend time with people that we share a common past with, when in reality, we need to be focusing on spending our time with people we have a common future with. We also need to learn to recognize, hey, you know, what people should we expand our, 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 our um, associations with and which people should we limit and which people should we eliminate altogether. And, you know, I honestly believe that's probably one of the biggest life hacks um, success hack is who you surround yourself with. And, you know, many of us need to put, um, you know, put a diet restriction on the time that we consume with certain individuals. And let me tell you about that. You know, Darren's very, very smart. He'll talk to you about vibrational frequencies and everything like that. And, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. And here's how crazy about law of association is, you know, if you take a magnet and you take a needle and you put that needle on a magnet and you just let it sit there for 24 hours. The crazy thing about that is 24 hours later, that needle will have the same properties of the magnet and it actually becomes a magnet in itself so what does that tell you the people you surround yourself with most those are the vibes you're going to attract right and so to kind of understand how i got to where i'm at today you know you have to understand in 2014 i was at the peak of my network marketing uh, uh journey i would say i accumulated everything i thought you need to be successful i was making annual income on a monthly basis at a penthouse in california at a penthouse in seattle washington and every single week, I was speaking on a different stage in a different city, a uh, different state, sometimes even country. But here's the deal. I'm not saying this to impress you. In fact, it's the quite opposite. Because at that moment in time, when I had all that success, I was actually the most miserable. I was completely unhappy and unsatisfied with my life. So you can imagine. Imagine making that type of money, having those type of results, driving the cars you want to drive, but still being miserable. Having people tell you every single day that they love you, that you changed their life, you inspire them and not really feeling whether that's sincere or genuine. And just to even understand that, you know, how I got to that point, you know, it all started when I was, uh, I think about 18 years old. If you guys look at these pictures that I put in front of you, um, the reason why I'm so confident in what I do and that what I share can support people is that what I share is not theory. This is not something that I read out of a book and, you know, I thought it was a good idea and I shared it with people. No, these are actually things that I've done, that I've applied over and over again. In fact, the things I'm going to share with you, this roadmap was a roadmap that I actually built and navigated when I was in hell. And that's one of the things I tell people is that oftentimes, maybe we go through hell so that way we can learn how to build a roadmap to help other people get out of it. And so it starts back at 18 years old. You know, I was my senior year in high school and I was eating lunch in the bathroom stall again. And that's normal for me. I was not the cool kid. I was always picked on. I was bullied. Um, I was the kid that was always playing Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! I had a roller backpack running in class. I was the person that everybody knew who he was but didn't know his name. And more importantly, I was the guy that every girl, um, you know, would tell all their secrets to, treat like their best friend just so I could do their homework. 
and just to say things like, man, I wish my boyfriend was more like you only to say, I don't want to ruin what we have. And just to prove it, if you look at this photo on the left uh, with the Eiffel Tower, that picture is my senior prom picture. I, not only did I have a prom date, my mom made me go by myself. You know, my family didn't have a lot of money. I had to get a, a suit from like an Asian rental. If you guys look at the suit, it's not even a regular suit. And it's funny, my mom took a picture and she said, you're going to want to remember this moment. And at that time, I was like, mom, why the hell would I want to remember this moment? This is probably one of the lowest moments of my life, going to prom by myself. I absolutely don't want to go. You're making me go. I'm wearing this weird suit. Like, why would I want to remember this? And uh, I'm so grateful that my mom had me take this picture. Now, here's why I want to share this with you. Right now, many of you, I don't know where you are in your network marketing journey. I don't know where you are in your entrepreneurship journey. But many of you are going to go on this journey where you're going to actually, you're going to say to yourself, man, I can't believe I'm going through this. Is this even worth it? And you're going to make it. And you're going to become successful. And you're going to have all these stories because you're going to know what it took to get there. You're going to know where you came from, where it all started. And the craziest part is when you start telling people where you came from, how you started, people are not going to believe you. And that's why I'm saying like, this is probably the best time to start documenting everything. It's kind of like if you're doing a weight loss journey, you know, when do you want to start documenting your results? Starting with your after pictures or starting with your before pictures? Starting with your before pictures. So start documenting your growth because you never know what's going to come in handy. And so, so that was me. And I went out there and I started doing network marketing at 18 years old. Oh, okay, sorry. So going back, you know, I was sitting uh, in the bathroom stall, eating lunch by myself. And I'm like, man, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of being a loser. Like, I want to make something of myself. Like, there has to be something different. Like, I'm tired of being made fun of. Like, I'm tired of being the butt of every single joke. And, um, you know, I had a, like kind of like a Ryan Reynolds moment from the movie Best Friends, right? And I said, you know what? Like, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. I'm going to make something of myself. And I'm going to be so cool. I'm going to get the hot girls. I'm going to drive the nice cars. I'm going to make so much money. And you know what? When I come back for the reunion, they're going to regret everything they ever said. That was my motivation. And so I graduated out of high school and I joined network marketing. I was 18 years old. I was cold marketed, by the way, on a college campus. And, you know, here's how crazy this is. Just give you guys an idea. Um, I wasn't even cold marketed. My friend was cold marketed. And, um, you know, the, you know, they pitched my friend and I, my friend wasn't interested. I said, Hey, I want to go. And the guy looked at me up and down and was like, Oh, I don't know if this is for you. And I don't mean he said that in a way that was like a takeaway, like a sales technique of fear of loss. Like he genuinely meant that. And I told my friends like, Hey man, tell them that you'll go if they let me go. Because I was interested because there's certain things that he said. And I was like, man, I want to see what this is about. And I went to that meeting. And I ended up getting started. And it started me on this journey. And let me tell you something. I didn't have success right away. Again, I don't know where you are in your journey. And, you know, I don't want you to compare, um, you know, your chapter one to someone else's chapter 10, someone else's chapter 20. And maybe we shouldn't even compare because maybe we're not even in the same book. But, you know, I got started network marketing in my first five years. That's what I looked like. The picture on the top right. Um, you know, I was like a little round ball. You know what I mean? I was always positive. I went to every single meeting. You know, I went to every single training. I read every single book. I listened to every single audio tape. But guess what? I made zero money. Okay, I'm exaggerating. I made maybe about like 200 bucks a month. I didn't have a lot of money, but like 200 bucks a month. I think the biggest team I ever had was about 15 people. And so, you know, I was in a company and, you know, my mentor at the time who I ended up becoming really good friends with, he sat down with me and he says, Julian, you know, I know in network marketing, you know, we tell people like anybody can make this happen. Anybody can do this business. And I used to believe that until I met you. Can you believe that? That's what my mentor said to me. He says, I used to believe that anybody can do this business until I met you. And honestly, I love you to death. You've become one of my close friends. I have a soft spot for you, but I'm starting to believe whether you can make this happen or not. Listen, there's this training that I want you to go through. It's transformation. I want, I'm going to pay for it for you. And the reason why is because you spent so much money. You invested so much in this business. You work harder than every else I know. You show up. And I just want to feel like, man, at least, you know, if you quit this business, I feel like I did something for you. And so I went to the training. And I went there with the intentions of learning how to become successful. And that was when I learned the secret. And I'm just going to show you the secret right now. Okay. So that way you can even cut off this webinar and you don't even listen to the rest. And here's the secret. And the secret is, is this, the secret to your results is not the action that you take. Because you think about it, everybody's going to take the same actions. We have access to the same scripts, the same system, but what's the differentiate? What's the difference? Because so often when things don't work out, we always ask ourselves, man, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? And in transformation, that's when I realized that the answer is not outside of me. It was inside of me. It's who do I need to be? Focus on the being. It's not, man, if I close more sales, I'll make more money, then I'll be confident. No, it's when I'm confident, I'll close more sales and make more money. Then I have to form the, you know, mixed up. And honestly, that's, you know, I don't have time to go into that. Um, that's what we teach in our course. But, 
you know, Western society, we live in a society that teaches, oh, you know, about the, we live in a society that's all about, I need to have this to do this to finally be this, or I need to do this to have this to be this. And being confident, being happy, being loved is always a place to get to versus a place to come from. And, you know, for those of you that are interested in going on a spiritual journey, the spiritual journey is all about shifting from the having, which is like, you know, I need to, to have the cars, I need to have the money, I need to have, um, you know, the degree so I can be, so I can be um, happy, right, successful, to the doing, oh, I need to work hard, I need to forgive, I need to do that. And finally, ultimately, you get to the state of being, which is, oh, I can just start from that and let that be the lens of how I see the world and experience the world. And so from there, I was like, man, hell yeah, I got it. Who do I need to be to do the things that you do to have what I need to have? And I started looking at all the people I looked up to, all the people that, had, that made money. And I said, what makes them great? What makes them special in terms of their attitude and their mindset? Not the actions they take, but their attitudes, their mindset, their way of being, how confident are they, how do, you know, all that. And so I ended up adopting that and I realized I could be anything. And so I adapted, I reinvented myself. I created myself. And then 90 days after I took that training, I made my first $10,000 a month. I went on to build multiple six figures in several companies. Uh, I built an organization over 15,000 people all around the world. And there you go, 2014, that's where I was at. I was voted a top MM leader under 30. I think I was like top 15. I was voted a top male leader in the industry. I was at the peak of my game, but I was miserable. And I was miserable and I share this with you and I know I'm supposed to motivate you. I'm here to share with you no amount of money that you're gonna make in this company because you're gonna make a lot. No matter results, no matter recognition, it's ultimately going to give you the sense of fulfillment that you want. Now, is money important? Is recognition important? Absolutely. But here's the beauty of it. When you understand your value and who you are, that stuff comes naturally. But for me, I thought all that stuff was going to bring me happiness, but it didn't. And that's when I recognized that there were other areas of my life that need to develop too. And that's how I dived into to transformation. And now I have a unique way of looking at things, a unique way of doing things. And I'm probably going to share with you some of the same things your mentors will share with you, probably in a different way, probably with a different spin. And my intention with this call is that by the end of this, you're going to have a shift in mindset. You're going to say to yourself, you know what? I can do this. I can make this happen. And not only can I make this happen, I must make this happen. I will make this happen. And finally, you get to a place where you made it happen. Okay. And so long story short, after doing that, you know, I went on, I completely changed my life. You know, I mean, as you can tell by the other pictures at my heaviest, um, I was 210 pounds. I was in a very emotionally abusive relationship because I believed that was a relationship that I deserved. Um, and, you know, I made a lot of money, but I wasn't happy with who I am. You know, Jim Rohn said it best. What if you gained the world and it costed you your soul? And, you know, then I start questioning like, man, how, you know, I have the success, but why do I not feel fulfilled? And so now I have a higher sense of purpose. You know what I mean? Um, and not only that, but my lifestyle and income has, has changed. And it's all honestly because of network marketing and transformation. And I'm excited to share with you my philosophies from both, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about it. There's four keys to success. And these are four key important ingredients. They, all, they might sound very, very similar, but they're a lot different. The first one is vision. Um, and everything starts with vision. And what is vision? Vision is the desired image that you want for yourself, your family, your community, your organization, the world. Because you want, you need to see it. Yes. Hello? Signs are not changing. Again. Oh, the pictures are not changing? No. no, your slide's not changing. I think you just need to click on the slide in order to. Yeah, you probably just got to do it manually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, boom. Okay. So this is the before, right? Yeah. This is the after. Okay. Thank you, oh, by the perfect. way. Um, so four pieces of success, right? Uh, <laughs> say it again. I just okay. said you look like a so, beast in that photo. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, it was a huge difference. And what was crazy is I've been trying to change the external things for the longest time. But once I changed the things on the inside, things came naturally. Um, but yeah, so four keys to success. Everything starts with vision, belief, or state of mind, and the strategies. And if you notice, the first three is all about mindset. I honestly believe this, this business or any business, anything you do really is 80% uh, mindset and then 20% skill set, right? Because you, if you can't go there in the mind, you'll never go there in the body. So the first thing, that's why we always start with vision. Vision. Like I said, it's a desired image that you have for yourself, um, you know, your community, your organization, your family, the world. And you want to have a vision that's huge. Why is vision so important? Visions are infinitely more, more powerful than goals. Because number one, goals are temporary, right? Number two, goals only require you to get it done, right? And then vision is long lasting. It's going to continue to pull you forth, okay? And, you know, Helen Keller said it best. He goes, what's worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. And, you know, one of the things it says in the Bible, for those of you guys who follow the Bible, is without vision, the people perish. And so everything starts with vision. 
You have to know what it looks like, what it feels like. And in fact, you want your vision to be so big that when you get there, when you accomplish everything you set up to accomplish, it's almost like deja vu. You've been there before. So I'm going to support you in how to develop a vision. Okay, number two is all about your, your belief system and not only your belief. And obviously, you know, you have somewhat belief in the industry. And here's what's cool. You can believe in the industry. You can believe in the services. You can believe in the comp plan. But ultimately, none of that matters if you don't believe in yourself. So we're going to go over a couple of things to support you in raising your belief in yourself. Number three, your state of mind. It's, um, you know, a lot of times we, we, we think it's about the action. And it's not about the action. It's about the intention of where it's coming from. And essentially, there's two places we can operate from. One is scarcity. The other one's abundance. Now, guess what? You can go out there and love your girlfriend. But if you're going out there and showing love to your girlfriend because you're scared of losing her, you're going to get a different effect of going out there loving your girlfriend because you believe that you're worthy of that love. Okay, so we're going to talk a little about that. And last but not least is the strategies. You know, I mean, you can be excited all day long, but, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to get very, very far. Because eventually, here's what happens. In the very beginning, excitement and confidence, a way of being, will get you so far, but there'll come a place where skills and technique is going to be important. Okay, so three attributes to be successful. Okay, number one is you got to have the desire to be successful. And it starts with you. Desire is the starting point of all achievement. And, you know, unfortunately, this is the one thing that you need to bring to the table. You know, obviously with this call, you can see that Dan Fryer, you know, is not afraid to put on leadership trainings. He's going to, he's going to invest into you, right? He's going to develop the leadership training. He's going to, and the company already has a comp plan. They have everything else. So they're going to provide for you the structure. But the one thing that you need that they cannot provide is the desire. And that's something that you have to lock in yourself because guess what? If you don't have the desire to make it happen, you'll never make it happen. You'll only do things when it's convenient and not because you're committed. Okay. Number two it's very, very important is you need to be able to take advantage of an opportunity when it comes knocking at your door. You see, you know, it's not just about being at the right place at the right time. You also got to take the right action because if you're at the right place, at the, if you're at the right place at the right time, you don't take the right action, you're going to be passed up and run over by everybody else that does. And the secret to taking advantage of, a, of the opportunity of a lifetime is to do that in the lifetime of opportunity because every opportunity has different stages and, you know, you got to recognize what stage you're in and you got to strike when the iron's hot. Okay. And number three, you got to be willing to work. You got to be, you have a commitment to work your ass off. Okay. And so let's talk about it. So we're going to talk about vision for a second, right? Vision oriented building versus random, uh, random building. You know, if you don't have a vision, what's going to happen is you're going to get bored very, very easy. And you know what? You're going to get tired. And more importantly, it's going to be very easy for you to quit. You know, if you're taking notes, one of the things that I'll share with you is this, is that getting rich is boring, but being rich is not. Because on your journey to being rich in network marketing, you're going to have to do the same thing every single day. What is that? You got to prospect, right? You got to invite, then you got to present, then you got to close, then you got to train them, and then you got to, you know, and then you repeat the process, right? It's the same thing every single day, but here's the difference. If you're just taking action because you're supposed to take action, it's almost like somebody going out there building a house for somebody else or just laying down brick and mortar. Like how far do you think you can go with that? Now, when you have a vision, it's like you're building your own house. You're taking the same steps. But you know that every single brick and mortar, piece of brick and mortar you're laying down, you're one step closer to your dream home. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who's, you know, a world-class bodybuilder, you know, at his peak, I mean, the guy had a body that was better than God. And, you know, in an interview, they asked him, they said, hey, like, don't you, you know, don't you get tired of eating the same food every single day? He goes, I do. He goes, don't you get, don't you get sore from working out every single day? He says, I, I, he goes, I do. He goes, and why is it? that you keep putting yourself through all that work, all that pain, all that stress. And he says, because I know that every rep that I, every rep that I do and every set that I do, I'm one step closer to creating that body that I want. And that's why having a vision is so important because it lets you know if you're on track or not. Now, not only is it important to have vision, but here's what's very, very important. You need to operate from that vision. Because in order to get to the promise line, you have to understand that every single word out of your mouth and every action you take has to be deliberate and it's always leading you to the promised land. That everything you're doing is intentional because guess what? If what you're doing is not intentional, you're wasting your time. And let, let me tell you something. If you love your life, then you need to appreciate time because time is what life is made out of. And here's the deal. I don't like structure. I don't like being organized. Um, you know, I'm very, care, I'm very carefree and I like to go to the flow, but here's why I learned to be organized and here's why I learned structure because structure creates freedom. Now, how do you create structure by you knowing your vision? When you have vision, it's so easy to create structure and it's so easy to let you know if you're on track or not. Cause guess what? When you have vision, it's very easy to operate from abundance. And it's very easy to operate out of inspiration. You know, they say that if you're tired, 
you're not inspired. You know, there's a great book that's out there that I highly recommend to, to those of you that are listening. It's called Power Versus Force by David Hawkins. And it's a really great book. And it tells you the difference between whether you're operating from power or you're operating from force. Now, force is happening when you're operating out of desperation, right? And then power is when you're operating out of inspiration. And a good example of that is think about it. If I were to ask you, if you had to go to school and you had to study, right? You probably have to force yourself to do it. It's probably something that you didn't really enjoy yourself to enjoy to do. But if I told you to go out there and learn anything that you went out there and chose to learn, you were inspired to do it. It came easy. You could get lost in it for hours. Why? Because you're inspired to. And where does that inspiration come from? From vision. That's why vision is so important. And I'm going to show you how to create a vision in a moment, right? So as you guys go through network marketing in this industry, um, and this applies to everything, is that there's going to be four levels of learning, okay? And you got to cut yourself some slack. Now, I don't know what stage you're at. Some of you might be at the stage number one, unconscious and competent. It means you don't know what you don't know. And that's usually people when they first get started, they're confident, far exceeds their ability. Those are the people that get started like, I'm going to make six figures in 30 days. You know, they set like crazy outrageous goals, right? And, uh, you know, that's a lot of times with people. There's ignorance on fire. I mean, let me tell you something. Ignorance on fire is way better than, than intelligence on ice. What does that mean? The person that's excited, the person that believes, is always going to get more results than the person that knows the information. Because I'm pretty sure some of you who maybe have been in this industry for a while, you've seen people come in and all of a sudden, just because they're excited, they have the right attitude, blow by every single person else that has been in the, the company longer, that has more experience. Okay? So unconscious and competent, you don't know what you don't know. So again, you start building the business for a while and you start to realize, okay, certain things are not working. Certain things are not clicking. And that, when you reach that stage, is conscious and competent. It means I know that I don't know. And here's what I want to share with you is that most of the things, most of the information that we need in order to be successful and change our life is things that we don't know, we don't know. And so be okay with not knowing, you know, in fact, Socrates, who's considered the smartest person in the world, um, you know, that ever existed, his most famous line is, all I know is I know nothing. And, you know, that's the best place to offer them, especially when you hop on these calls, when you surround yourself with people like Darren and other leaders, you know, even for me, I listen more than I talk. And the reason why I like doing that is because I always learn so much from everybody. Everybody's a master at something and you can always learn something if you're watching. Okay. So again, conscious and competent means you don't know that you, uh, you know that there are things that you don't know. And that's a great space to be at because that's where most of the growth and expansion comes from. Now, third is conscious competent. It means you know, and guess what? It takes all your focus, takes all of your energy, but you know it. Okay. And last but not least, it's where you want to get to. It's unconscious competent. It means you know, and you don't even have to think about it. It comes second nature. You know, in martial arts, my, 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 my master, my coach would always tell me this one thing. And it's something that I love so much. And he says, you need to train until your mind forgets, but the body remembers. And that's why these calls are so important. That's why attending so many events is so important. And that's why practicing presentation is so important. Don't practice presenting when you have a guest. Don't practice closing when you have a guest. Practice it when you don't. So when you do, you're prepared. Does that make sense? <coughs> So once again, and again, I'm just coughing because my throat's dry, not because of the coronavirus. If you laugh, you're racist. Just kidding. Are you sure? Um, but yeah, so you want to get, so you want to get to a place um, where you know, and it's second nature. Like for example, Darren Fryer could probably do this training with his eyes closed. Why? Because he's done it so much, and that's why I'm also going to share with you, like be a student, always be a student, because there's always something to learn. Okay. So how do we create vision? And why is being a visionary so important? Before we even get to that, I want to share with you a quick story um, about Walt Disney. Now, what's in front of you is the Epcot Center. It's probably the crown jewel of, you know, Disney World. And, it, and what it represents something very, very important. Now, Disney has an incredible story. You know, I encourage you guys to get a chance to listen to them. Um, you know, before, Bugs, uh, before um, you know, Mickey Mouse, there was Walt the Rabbit. He created all this thing. He was so inspired and, you know, literally got taken from him. And... Um, from that, um, you know, he, he was able to create Mickey Mouse, right? But anyways, the Epcot Center, why is that so valuable? Well, it's because it represents imagination, and it was his dream. He wanted to create a place where people can come and be celebrated for their arts and their craft. And he had this whole vision for it, but unfortunately, he died before it was complete. Now, during the unveiling of it, um, you know, during the unveiling of it, um, you know, one of the reporters was, was speaking to his son. Walt Disney's son, and he goes, man, I, you know, I know how important this was to your dad. I knew your father quite some time. He's an, ama he's an amazing man, and I wish he could be here to see it. And, um, you know, he said something very, oh, Walt Disney's son said something very, very powerful. He goes, my dad did see it, and that's why you're able to see it today. 
So I want you to know the things that people are going to be able to see in the future, things you've created, it's only going to be able for them to see because you see it today. So how do you create a vision? Okay. Very, very simple. Number one is you got to know your why. Now, I know in network marketing, we hear this all the time, know your why, but my why is a little bit different. And here's why I want to share that your why, what I talk about is why do people need you? What do you bring to the table? And I say that because a lot of you are going to go out there and build this business. If you don't know what value you bring to the table, guess what? You're going to be the one doing the convincing. You're going to be doing the one being the, you're going to do the one, be the one begging. So I say, know your why. Why do people need you? Why is it a benefit and a pro for them to join your team? Is it because you're a great listener? Because you're a great communicator? Because you're very compassionate? You're empathetic? You're a great leader? You're committed? What is it? Know your strengths. Know what you bring to the table. And why is that so important? Because guess what? You're not doing, people are not doing you a favor by joining your business. You might think they're doing you a favor because when they join, you get a commission check and you get residuals. No, you're doing them a favor because guess what? You're plugging them to a system where they can completely change their life, where they could be, do, have, whatever it is, no exceptions if they work hard enough. You're providing them an opportunity because guess what? If they don't join, your opportunity to change your life is still there, but theirs is not. But they do join, guess what? You both have an opportunity. So you're doing them a favor. And when you know what you bring to the table, here's what happens. Now when you're presenting, your mindset is, Okay, I'm going to give you this information, but I'm going to see how you're a good fit for the team and why I want to work with you. And that's a totally different space because when you know what you bring to the table, not, you're not going to be desperate. And because they're going to sense that, they're going to try to qualify themselves on why they would be a good asset to your team. So again, know your why. Why do people need you? What do you bring to the table? Okay. Okay. Number two in building your vision is know your who. And what that means is who do you have a heart for? Okay. Now, again, I know when you're building your business, you want to attract everybody, but guess what? Who do you specifically have a heart for? Is it, is it, you know, uh, single mothers? Maybe you're, you know, you're, you're a single mother and you're doing this business because you want to change your life because you know how hard it is you want to provide for your, for your child. And so who do you have a heart for? Maybe, you know, you're somebody that was in the military and, you know, you had all these promises and now you got out and you're a veteran, but you can't find a job and your heart is for veterans. You know, maybe you're, maybe yours is wounded warriors. Maybe you're someone that had success in another industry and lost it all because it was very, very vulnerable. Now you want to change your life. So who do you have a heart for? Because those are the people that when you talk to naturally, your passion, your excitement is going to come out, your vision is going to come out and they're going to be pulled to you. Okay. So know your who, okay. Who do you have a heart for? Next is know your what. And what that is, is what do you want? Okay. And I'll put when uh, slash when know what you want and know when you want it. Okay. Give me one quick second, guys. I forgot my charger downstairs. I'm going to ask for it right now before my laptop dies. I forgot my charger. Ah, okay. So you got to know your what. And what that is is very, very simple is, is what do you want and when do you want it? That, this is your vision. What do you want and when do you want it by? You see, all the other things are so important because, again, when you know the, the top parts, when you know your why, you know your who, it's going to be very easy for you to build your tribe. It's going to be very easy for you to go out there and share the business. And more importantly, you're going to get what you want a lot faster. And more important, that's going to support your vision. Because if you know all these other things, you're going to know what motivates them. You're going to know what inspires them. You're going to know what their fears are. You're going to know what their doubts are. And because you know that, it's going to be easy for you to sign them up because people don't care how much you know so they know how much you care. And when you can identify them, when they feel seen and heard and valued by that, feel like I like you, or not even I like you, but like, you know, I want to be like you, that's when everything changes, okay? And then last but not least, know your how. How are you going to build your business? How are you going to go out there? How are you going to make it happen? And that strategy, you know, I mean, Darren Fryer is probably one of the best that I know. I mean, you know, at such a young age, was able to go out there and make so much amount of money. And not only that, but has great experience in the old school and the new school. So they're going to provide you the strategy that you need. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the next is your belief. Okay. Some of this stuff you guys probably already heard. You guys already know, but at the end of the day, whether you think you can or can't either way, you're right. So you need to shift your mindset. What are you focusing on? Right? Because at the end of the day, here's the deal. Your beliefs determine your thoughts, your thoughts determine your feelings, your feelings determine your actions, your actions determine your results. You see what happens is a lot of people, you know, they think it's all about action. Yes, actions are important. Your attitude, not your aptitude, determines your altitude. What does that mean? Is that your attitude, your your beliefs, your thoughts, your feelings, that emotion, that passion, is what's going to happen is either going to elevate the action that you take or it's going to limit the actions you take. Because someone that's operating out of scarcity, someone that's going to operate out of survival, might take the right actions, but they're going to get different results or they're going to get temporary results. 
but someone that's doing it out of inspiration because they believe, they know they can do it, they're motivated, they take the same action, they're going to get different results. And uh, the other thing I want to tell you is, you know, don't be a slave to your past. Instead, be a master of your future. You know, a lot of us, you know, you come from different backgrounds. And here's what I want to say is that you're, you know, you are who you are. You can learn from your past, but you don't have to be defined by it. And here's what I want to show you. This is a huge opportunity for you to reinvent yourself and create yourself wherever you want to be. And, you know, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And, you know, at the end of the day, you can't create a new beginning for yourself, but you can write a new ending. And so I ask you, the reason why I say that is because don't bring your past into here. Instead, bring your future, your future into your present. As in, like, who do you want to be when this is all over? How do you want to be remembered? Right? Be the leader that you'd want to follow. But at the same time, be the representative that you want to attract into your business. Okay. Your posture is a lot different than confidence. You know, posture is, is a state. Confidence is a feeling. You know what I mean? And, and being, coming from a state is definitely infinitely more powerful. So, um, and, and yeah. So the next thing I want to share is make failure your best friend. Um, understand that, you know, you either win or you learn. And I think what's crazy about it is that so many of us, like, we want to succeed, but we don't give, our chance, uh, give ourselves a chance to fail. Failure is not the opposite of success. In, in fact, it's a part of success. You know, I, I made a post the other day. It's like, you know, imagine failure is like, a, imagine your success is like a video game. You're on your journey and every setback, every failure um, that's thrown in, in your way is actually an obstacle or a challenge for you to get better so you can actually pass the level and beat the boss. Okay. So look at it as your friend. You know, in fact, you know, I know this sounds really, really crazy, but, you know, one of the things I do is, you know, I, I, am, I, I do this close eye meditation where I imagine, you know, my future self. And, you know, my future self shows me, you know, everything that who I'm destined to be, who I end up being coming and the things I accomplish. And more importantly, you know, everything that I, that, that I need to show up as. And then once I meditate on that, I imagine that, then I imagine myself as that person now. And then I imagine myself saying, okay, my future self, that person is now sent back in time. And here I am. And I know that I'm going to become successful. And all I know is that every setback is an important step to get to where I want to get to. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but it comes from actually a spiritual philosophy. Um, you know, Darren can probably tell you a lot more about it than I can. Uh, but the idea is this, is that before you're born, you actually chose your challenges. You actually chose your problems. You chose the things that you wanted to learn and overcome. And so what happens is before you're born, you choose all that. And then now you're born into life and you get to navigate through it. And imagine what if every problem, every challenge, every obstacle that has come into your life, imagine that you chose it. Your higher self has chosen it for your greater good. And it's important. It's not there to stop you. It's actually there to propel you forward. And again, you know, the way you look at things, you know, determine how you experience them. And at the end of the day, we don't really experience the world as it is. We experience the world as we are. And when we change our experience of ourselves, we change the world. And so that's how I imagine it, that everything that's happened, it's for my greater good. Now, there's no evidence of it, but guess what? Whatever you look for, you're going to find, okay? Because you don't always see your beliefs, but your beliefs always determine what you see, okay? Um, so the next step is controlling your state of mind. And again, there's a huge difference between scarcity versus abundance. And all I want to share with you, because I don't have a lot of time to dive into it, is to ask yourself, am I doing this out of survival? Am I doing this out of desperation? Am I doing this because I'm inspired? Am I motivated? And how you know is ask yourself, like, doing this, how does it feel? And again, just shift the place of where you're coming from, you know, because one of the, some of the people that take my training, um, you know, they go out there because, you know, they want to save their relationship. And again, they go out there to save the relationship. They go, I realize that I need to appreciate my significant other. I need to be open and honest with them. I need to communicate, um, you know, I need to communicate honestly and be open and vulnerable and emotionally connected. And so I go, that's great answers. But guess what? If they do it, they take all those actions so they don't lose their significant other. Guess what's going to happen? They're playing out of survival, so they're going to lose their significant other. But they choose to do it because they love their significant other and they believe their significant other deserves that and they value that. Guess what? The action is going to come across a lot differently. Okay? So it's not what you do. It's the place that it's coming from. And the next thing is how to control your state of mind is understand the difference between a breakdown versus a breakthrough. Right? What is a breakdown? It's an interruption and in commitment. So all of you that are on this, you have a goal, right? You have a vision, things that you want to accomplish. And guess what? Until you get there, you're in breakdown. Okay. Again, a breakdown is the interruption in a commitment. So then what is a breakthrough then? You know, breakthrough is that magic moment when you shift your focus from the breakdown, from the interrupt, interruption back to the commitment. And, you know, what's happening right now, you know, I feel like this is a huge interruption. In fact, one of the things that I'm a firm believer is that this disruption is actually 
a redirection for our destiny. Does that make sense? So understand that every time an interruption happens, it's a part of it. And again, how fast can you shift your mindset and your focus from the interruption to the commitment? Because hey, wherever focus goes, energy flows. Wherever you focus on, expands. So again, most people, when there's an interruption, you know, oh, and there's a breakdown, right? They focus on the interruption. And that's, guess what they have? More problems. But those that focus on commitment, like, okay, this has happened. So what? What now? Moving forward, you know, you get the result. And again, one of the biggest things I'm a firm believer in is word creates the world. And, um, you know, what do I mean by that? We live in language. And at the end of the day, what we speak about, we bring about. And the words that we speak publicly and privately all have powerful, all controls the things that we experience, things that we see. In fact, you know, a lot of us, we grew up maybe looking at magicians and all that other stuff. There's a famous thing called abracadabra. And you know what that translates to? That translates to I create with my words. Think about it, spelling, affirmation, all that. It's power of words. And so be very mindful of the language that you speak. And again, is your language, the words that you're speaking, that of scarcity or, or abundance? And I'll take that a step further. You know, one of the things I believe in is, is changing the things that you say because words have meaning, right? Instead of looking at things as problems, look at them as challenges. Because when you look at problems, you're not very motivated to solve them. You actually feel drained by them. When you look at something as a challenge, you're almost called forward. You're pulled forward and you're, you're, you're almost excited. You look forward to it. It's an obstacle, something to overcome and to win, right? You know, a lot of us, we have some things that we feel like we should do. But, you know, Tony Robbins said it best, right? Turns our shoulds into must. We don't always do the things that we should do, but we always do the things that we must do. So identify the things in your life, things in your business you must do. And last but not least, one simple mindset that I think is so powerful. You know, a lot of times we operate from a place of, I have to do this, I have to do that. No, you get to. Have to comes from a place of like resentment, burden, you know, obligation, duty, have to. And that makes us feel a whole bunch of things that don't necessarily motivate us. But when we look at things as a privilege, that's something we get to do, they, we have to understand it's a blessing, okay? And so a couple things to remember. Number one, when you guys go out there and build the business, again, be enthusiastic as hell because enthusiasm is everything. In fact, enthusiasm, the last four letters, I-A-S-M, that's where I am sold myself. And until you're sold yourself, you can never sell anybody else. So be excited. You know, one of the things that, you know, you know, I'm pretty sure Darren Fryer will, you know, will attest to this is that when you go out there and you build your business, here's what's going to happen. You're going to scare one out of 10 by being too excited, but you will scare nine out of 10 by not being excited enough. Can you imagine if you truly found an opportunity that you know can change everybody's life, can change your life, right? Their financial future, everything forever. Why wouldn't you be excited by it? Right? You know, a lot of times when I talk to people, they're like, I'm excited. Well, I'm like, tell your face. So guess what? If people cannot catch your enthusiasm, they cannot tell you by your excitement, they're not going to get excited. In fact, you know, Darren shared it earlier. He says, you know, sales, the transference of emotion. Guess what? Whatever you feel, your prospect's going to feel. Whatever you feel, your guests are going to feel. So how do you want them to feel and operate from that? You want, to feel, you want them to feel safe. You want them to feel certain. And, and, you know, that leads me to number two, be sharp as a tack. And this one's a little bit different. I don't necessarily mean suits anymore. Okay. Because, you know, I've met people that, you know, can wear literally slides and pajamas and they can sell all day long. I think sharpness is a way of being. It's a certain level of competency. And here's what I want to share with you. Here's where you want to get at, okay? Is that when you can articulate people's problems and challenges, wants and desires, fears and doubts better than they can, they'll look at you as an expert. And that's where you want to get at in your business. You want to learn your business. You want to know how it works. You want to be competent at it, okay? You want to show up as a person like, man, this person knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing or she knows what she's talking about and she knows what she's doing. And last but not least is you have to recognize that you're forced to be reckoned with that people, when they join your team, that they're lucky to be a part of your team. That's honestly the way you got to look at it. Because if you, if you wouldn't sign up with you, you cannot expect other people to sign up with you. And here's what I want to share with you. Network marketing might be different for you, or maybe you have experienced before. But if you look in your life, I'm pretty sure you can find victories and celebrations and moments where you accomplish great things. And guess what? The things that, require, that you needed to accomplish those things, are the same things you need to accomplish here. So if you can do it in one area, you can do it in another area, okay? So as far as strategies, um, these are some of the universal strategies that, that I believe work for every single business. And number one is you wanna learn the business by plugging into every single event possible. Plug into every single event possible, okay? Plug into every single event possible. I can't say that enough. Plug into every single event possible. I never miss an event. Um, you know, you know, when I first got started in the industry, mentor says, Julian, the only time you can miss an event is if there's a, if it's a funeral or a wedding and you're in it. Now, I don't want to say like, you know, you got to be like that Nazi, like, you know, that hard, but that essentially that's how you want to treat it. every, let me tell you something, every event that you can plug into that you do 
will lead you to one step closer to your target. But every event that you can plug into that you don't go to is going to move you one step back from your target. Okay. And the next one is listen to as many conference calls as possible. Um, you know, one of the best things that I, I think about this time right now during this quarantine is that people are starting to realize that, you know, they can find ways of being connected in different ways, shapes and forms. And I honestly think like these webinars, these calls are going to be some of the biggest tools in supporting you building your business. And not just that, but like, you know, for myself, I still look at myself as, as a normal person. I just went through a lot. I don't look at myself as a guru. I just look at myself as a person that's went through a lot of shit that's went through hell and built the roadmap to get out. Right. And I, I, I know Darren has a lot of really great contacts, people that are a lot more successful than I am, people a lot more polished than I am. And guess what? He's going to get them on the calls with you. I know he had another gentleman speak on uh, on a call recently before before this one. And so I want to share that you want to plug into that because Darren's the type of leader that's going out there pulling his resources to make you better. And why is that valuable? Because Darren understands what it takes to build this business. And here's what I mean by that. You know, as we all learn, products and services don't sell themselves. OK, it's not like your service or your product's gonna grow legs, and it's gonna to go to people's homes, and it's gonna talk for you, it's not gonna do that, okay? So obviously it requires people, but here's what most people do. Most, most inexperienced leaders, what they do is they focus on getting their people to move products, and they get their people to move services. Now let me tell you something, people don't move products, and people don't move services, because if they did, guess what? Every company would be wildly successful. But let me tell you, here's the difference maker. People who are moved, move products and services. So what Darren's doing is phenomenal. He's focusing on moving you, getting you move, touch, and inspire. Because guess what? If you're move, touch, and inspire, you know your why, you know your how, your when, you know what drives you. Guess what? You're going to be willing to go out there and take the steps you need to take to have all the things you want to have. Okay. Um, next, I want to say is invest in your professional education. You know, Jim Rohn said it best, you know, in this industry, you're not going to make professional money with amateur skills. So invest in your professional education. Yes, right now, do all that you can be set on fire, run with ignorance on fire. But here's the magic. You want to do your best. And here's the deal. Okay. I know that sounds corny. Do your best guys. Do your best. Uh, but here's, here's the truth about doing your best. Uh, many of you who, who have ever been told, you know, you need to work harder. You need to do your best. Um, have probably been frustrated because you probably have found yourselves in times when you've done your best and you're doing everything you can. You're still not getting results. And that's when the next principle is so important. I want to share with you the sad reality is, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, your best sometimes is not good enough. And in fact, unless it's something you've already accomplished before, your best is not sufficient, it's not good enough. And so when we tell people to go out there and do their best, we're only giving them half the equation. I think it's important to do your best while going out there, learning and studying to become better. And once you become better, do your best until you know better and then do your best. Okay, it's a constant, never-ending improvement. Guys, that never-ending improvement. I think that's so important. You know, in fact, I got uh, that tattooed on my on my arm, the Ouroboros, the dragon eating its own tail. It's constant rebirth and, and evolution. Because guess what? Every new level of you is going to require a different you. And not only that, but every new level brings itself to new devils. And that's where we're constantly going to have to expand and get out of our comfort zone. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to say focus on getting on base and not hitting home runs. What are the basic things that you can do every single day to move the needle forward? You see what stops people from taking action is most people think that the action they need to take needs to be a home run. It needs to be something freaking crazy. And, and it stops them. Just take simple actions. What can you do every single day to move the needle forward? Okay. Figure out what that is for you. And next but not least, I know that sounds kind of crazy. You're like, what does it have to do with network marketing? But audit your life. Audit your life. Because, you know, one of the biggest things is to become successful is going to take a lot of power. It's going to take a lot of energy. And... One of the things that I do before I teach people how to gain power, how to gain energy, the easiest way to do that is to figure out where your energy is being drained, where's your energy being used and get rid of it. And so here's a couple of questions to screenshot it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys this quick rundown, but I promise you, you apply this. And it seems like it doesn't apply to anything that you're doing, but it's going to make a big difference. Audit your life. Number one, what are you putting in your body? Literally take the time to write everything you're putting into your body. The more specific you are, the better. Okay. Next, who do you surround yourself with? Again, you know, are these people people that, that, you know, you should be expanding your relationships with because they help you get closer to your goal? Or are these people you should limit because, you know, you can spend an hour with them, but not a day with them, not a week with them? Are these people that are just not good to be around when you're around them, it drains your energy and you leave feeling worse than you met them, okay? Next is what is your media consumption? Let me tell you something. Um, I believe it's cool to, to consume media, but don't be consumed by, by media and, you know, and again, be strategic with it. You know what I mean? 
um, go out there, be a producer of content, but make sure that when you're consuming content, that you're consciously aware and deliberately choosing what you're downloading into your brain. Next, what are your hobbies? Write that all out. Next, what are your vices? And then here's what you do. You write out what are the, what are the benefits and what is the cost? Simple business, auditing. What is the benefit? What is the cost? And then ask yourself, does the benefit outweigh the cost? And do, keeping this in my life, does it move the needle forward or does it move it backwards? And guess what? Anything that doesn't move you forward, you need to eliminate. You need to eliminate. That's just the way it is. And guess what? Right off the bat, all that energy that was spent in those areas now get redirected into funneling and fueling what you need to do.